Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the program, welcome to the show. I am your host, Mark Goldberg, and this is Mark Logs Watches. Today, we're gonna briefly talk about what's coming up with Rolex, but before we do that, let's get into the quick fist watch check. Hey guys, I'm a dog trainer and I'm also an author. You can support this channel by buying a copy of my book, The Art of Training Your Dog, or my first book, Let Dogs Be Dogs, available wherever books are sold. Throw a like on this video and please subscribe so we can do it again. And now the fist watch check. And here she is. Today I'm wearing a monster watch. This is the Marathon Jumbo Day Date. Huge watch. Hey guys. Um, so uh, that was a quick fist watch check, but you know, uh, as usual, the topic here is going to be Rolex. Rolex. Guys, I saw the leak, um, which you may have seen, of the rose gold Hulk and the, ro and, the, and the rose gold Daytona with meteorite dial. I love both of those renderings, but... I'm gonna say I think it's fake news. Now I know it first appeared on Rolex Passion Report, but they're not vouching for it. They're, somebody, I think somebody photoshopped that up and just sent it in. That's just a guess. What's my prediction? Well, I'll just spit it out really quick. Um, and I, I don't think this is a revolutionary idea, but I think we're gonna see a 42 millimeter titanium yacht master. That's what I think is gonna be coming out shortly. Well, look at me, I'm, uh, I'm even, I'm even, slightly less kempt than usual, fresh in from dog training. 42 millimeter titanium yacht master. Why do I say that's not such an outrageous prediction? Well, because we saw a, um, a prototype of that. I have not heard from Money Penny in a really long time, like actually a couple years. So I, I, don't, I don't know what happened to that source. I think the source was burned, sadly. However, um, what I can tell you is that Money Penny told me one year before the 42 millimeter steel yacht master came out that it was going to, and Money Penny was right. Then we saw the titanium uh, prototype, and then all of a sudden we have the Rolex Challenge in titanium, which is a full production watch, unlike really any other Rolex out there. Its closest comparison would be the prototype for the James Cameron, but it's not even 100% exactly that. So Rolex is clearly, they're working with titanium. They've got the tool and dies to do so. I think that we should expect to see the, uh, the 42 millimeter titanium Yachty. Now, um, Mike the Snake tells me that there are various grades of titanium. I mean, we all know about grade one or grade two, because that's really common. Grade two is really common in titanium watches. Unless I miss my guess, that's what the Pelagos is, which I own, the 42 millimeter titanium Pelagos. But what Mike says is, when you get up into grade four and five, the, the, the dull gray of that grade two begins to morph into a more stainless steel looking brightness. Um, so I'm gonna further guess that Rolex will be working with a higher grade of titanium to get a brighter look on that Yacht Master than what you would expect from like grade two. So I don't think it will be as dull a gray as the Plagos. I don't think it will be quite as bright a stainless steel, as you see on 904L. But I, um, but I do expect to see some um, a titanium watch other than the Challenger come out this year at Watches and Wonders, which is, it, it spans the very end of um, March and the very beginning, very first couple days of April. So we will know all of this stuff relatively soon, uh, certainly within, uh, within a month or less of now. The other thing that we could talk about is what is likely to be discontinued. Now, I have the, the Sprite. Let me throw a picture of that in right here. And 
I'm getting an email or two saying, Mark, do you think they will be discontinuing the Sprite? And this is just a guess, but um, having had my ear to the wall that separates me and Rolex and you and Rolex, with no specific knowledge otherwise, I'm gonna say no. I don't think that the Destro, that the Sprite, that that left-handed GMT is gonna be around. I, I've long said since the beginning, and when I got one, I've said if it lives to see its fifth birthday, I'll be quite surprised. Um, so I think three to five years I ultimately will be the lifespan of that watch. I don't expect to see that discontinued this year, although if they do, <laughs> I will be sitting pretty. I actually like the watch very much. Probably the uniqueness of it appeals to me. I like things that are, you know, a little oddball, a little different, maybe like me. So there's that. But also, I'm a loom fanatic, and um, I'm telling you guys, Rolex has done something to the loom, whether it's just on that watch or all the newest production watches, which I think is more likely. And uh, the, the loom is 20% brighter and longer lasting than anything I remember, um, even from a couple years ago. So no, I don't think the Sprite will be going away, but, I, I think it's very possible that they will discontinue the 41 millimeter green dial OP. So I think the green will go away. Um, I have one of those too, so um, it's not wishful thinking. It's just following a pattern that Rolex also followed in the 70s with the Stella dial colors, which included that one. So I do think we'll see a discontinuation of at least one color. Maybe the also the 36 millimeter OP in candy pink. I think that might go away also. So I, I think we'll see a little bit of shifting in the OP colors in terms of discontinuation. I don't think we'll see new colors. I don't think we'll see a new design in the OP line. So there's that. There's been a lot of talk about a um, solid gold explorer Maybe, maybe not. I don't really have a, a dog in that fight. I, I don't really know what's gonna happen there. Um, and that's the thing about Rolex is you never really know. Will there be a whole brand new model? That's really the big question. I don't think so, you know? They came out with the challenge as a new model, mid-year, like a mid-year introduction. But, um, Rolex is more is less known for new models and giant surprises like that, and they're more known for uh, incremental tweaks to the line. So I think that's likely what we're going to see here. Another rumor that I'll address is that the that steel Daytonas are going to go away, and that they'll stick only to precious metal Daytonas. I don't think so. I mean, we just have to use as much common sense as we can muster regarding the Rolex line. So I kind of don't think so. Um, the Daytona was introduced in steel. It has been produced in steel ever since the beginning of the line. Um, and, and I think Rolex is very well committed to the, the Daytona in steel. So I don't think we're gonna see any change in that uh, in terms of eliminating stainless. And I certainly don't see, I'm, I'm quite sure we're not gonna see one in titanium. But more than one person has floated the idea of will they bump it up a silly millimeter from its supposed 40 now to 41. I mean, let's be honest, the, the Daytona, um, I'll, I'll, let me throw a picture of my Panda Daytona in here and I want you to look at its relative delicacy and size. You know, it's kind of like a delicate watch and doesn't wear real big, even though it's purportedly a 40. Here you go. So the question is, will they bump that up um, to a 41 and just so that it wears a little bigger? And you know what, guys? I think that's possible. Um, and in fact, I think it's probable, but I can't say that it's probable for now. I think it's that's something that I think we really ought to look for in the next three to five years, but I don't know that it's going to happen right now. Well, fellas, that's all I got for you today. Um, why don't you go ahead in the comments and tell me what your reactions are to my thoughts, and more importantly, what are your predictions for Rolex, or do you even care? Are you just over Rolex? We're going to talk about it in the comments, and I'll meet you there. Take care, guys. This is Goldberg. Peace out. <music>